In this lecture, you'll learn about IP spaces, which allow you to have duplicate IP addresses in your ONTAP cluster. IP spaces allow different SVMs in the same ONTAP cluster to have overlapping subnets and IP addresses. This was not available in older versions of cluster data on tap. There, data lifts had to have unique IP addresses. So it wasn't possible to have the same IP address on two different lifts in two different SVMs, but we can do that now. So with IP spaces, lifts in different SVMs can have the same IP address as each other. So you might be thinking, well, why would I ever want to do that? Well, maybe you've had a merger or maybe you're a storage service provider who's servicing multiple clients and you want them to be able to have the same IP address as each other on their storage. So you can see it an example here. We've got three different SVMs and we've got two different IP spaces. The reason that we've created the separate IP spaces is that the first SVM is using IP address 10.1.1.10 and the third SVM is also using IP address 10.1.1.10. To be able to do that, we have to put them into separate IP spaces. Don't worry for now about the broadcast domains that you see here. We're going to be talking about broadcast domains in a later lecture in this section. So for it to be possible to have duplicate IP addresses in our cluster, the IP spaces, the way that they work is they're equivalent to a VRF, a virtual routing and forwarding table on a router. If you're already used to working with networking and you know what VRFs are, I've included this information so that you can see how they work. If you're not used to working with networking and you've never heard of VRFs before, then don't worry about it. Just be aware that by having IP spaces, it allows you to have separate routing tables. With separate routing tables, you can have duplicate IP addresses there. IP spaces are not required for secure multi-tenancy. That is already provided by SVMs. So with SVMs, say we've got an SVM for Department A and an SVM for Department B, then Department A is going to have its volumes in the Department A SVM, which keeps the data separate. And Department A will have its IP addresses on its lifts, again, in the Department A SVM, which keeps the IP addresses and the network connectivity separate. On your external routers and firewalls, you should have rules configured there, which prevent clients in Department A from having connectivity to the IP addresses in Department B. So we can do all that. We've got this, the securely separated data and network connectivity is already provided by the SVMs. IP spaces are not required to do that. The only reason that we're really required to use IP spaces is if we've got duplicate IP addresses. Multiple SVMs can be in the same IP space and very commonly will be. All data and management lifts are members of the default IP space by default. If you don't need to support overlapping addresses, it's not required to create additional IP spaces. You can just leave all your data and management lifts in the default IP space. You will have at least one other IP space, which is the cluster IP space. That is there by default and your cluster lifts are members of the cluster IP space. Don't change that, just leave it how it is. So what are some common use cases for using our IP spaces? And well, I mentioned this a bit earlier. Common use cases include service provider environments or mergers where there are overlapping IP subnets. So say that you are company A and then you have a merger with company B. And just with the way that the, the IP addressing schemes have been laid out, it means that really it's going to be easier to have duplicate IP addresses on your storage. Honestly, this would be a stopgap, a workaround. You would want to change that over time, but immediately following the merger, maybe it would be easier to have duplicate IP addresses on the same cluster. You could do that with IP spaces. 
other common use case is the service provider environment. And maybe they've got multiple customers. And again, just with the way that the customer's IP addresses are laid out, they could have multiple customers that want to use the same IP address on the storage. The way they, they would do that, again, is with using IP spaces. Another reason for doing it is if you're migrating from the old seven mode on tap, which did support duplicate IP addresses for a long time before the clustered version did. And if you were migrating from seven mode, which has got duplicate IP addresses on there, when you migrated over to the new clustered on tap, then you would use IP spaces to be able to continue to support those duplicate IP addresses. Another reason you'll sometimes see IP spaces being recommended to be used is to help provide logical separation between networking functionality. For example, you may choose to create a separate IP space for your intercluster lifts, which are used for replication traffic for Snap Mirror and Snap Vault that we're going to be covering in a later section. So you can do it as well, again, just for logical separation. Also, if you are doing that, as long as you don't have a default route configured in your SVM, you could also use IP spaces to very carefully control the security of where traffic is able to get out to from a particular SVM. Again, honestly, you're going to have that configured on your routers and your firewalls anyway. So there's not really a need to do that on the ONTAP cluster, but you could do it just to get enhanced security. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.